This poster summarizes two projects that have been published in the last year, both focusing on an invasive aquatic species, Hydrilla verticillata. Its native range is mostly Eurasia through Australia. On the map here, the parts of the range that have a red outline in North and South America, as well as South Africa, those are areas where this species would be considered invasive. The other coloring on this map shows plastid haplotypes uh, highlighted in different colors there. I'll show you a phylogeny on the next slide. So this is information that was largely known prior to our work, and what we added was a substantial amount of data from the nuclear regions. The Nuclear Internal Transcribed Spacer, or ITS, and then another nuclear gene region, uh, phytoene desaturase, PDS. What we see from the IDS and the PDS trees are a pattern of uh, individual samples that have polymorphic sequences. So these colorful lines that are connecting the terminals on the phylogeny, those are connecting uh, multiple sequences that were obtained from the same individual through molecular cloning. And you can see that the uh, plastid genotype, which are the colorful shapes next to the terminal names, uh, those are mixing up their DNA across plastid haplotypes uh, pretty well throughout the range of this species. So maybe uh, reinforcing that this could be construed as a single species, even though it has wide range. So this was the work of one study. The next study uh, determined that we have a new invasive strain of hydrilla in the United States. So this is pretty important news that I'm happy to share today. Prior to our study and the discovery of this population in the Connecticut River in New England uh, around 2016, Prior to that, there were two strains, the U.S. dioecious and U.S. monoecious uh, strains or biotypes, as they're called. Again, hydrilla is a single species throughout its range. And the dioecious and monoecious were genetically differentiated, quite easy to tell apart genetically and also uh, with some morphological features. And this new plant showed up in the Connecticut River and DNA sequence data put it as a close relative of plants that have never been seen in the Americas before. Uh, it's closely related to plants in northern Eurasia. And the fact that this is genetically similar to plants in the northern part of the Hydrilla range, this is a species that is largely tropical. Uh, whereas this strain of hydrilla might well be adapted to more northern areas and pose a new management challenge for northern parts of the invading range. So one to definitely watch out for and stay vigilant about and a new one that potentially needs genetic confirmation to uh, distinguish this from the other already known biotypes in North America.